What's up, everybody? Welcome to Last Days of Warcast. We are the Last Days of War, Southern California based band. I'm Danny. I'm Rob. I'm Beats and Beats. What's going on, guys? What's first on the agenda? Shots. Shots. Cheers, everybody. I got to first apologize and say that I am now coming off as a liar. Uh, I've been saying that we were dropping two tracks, uh, but we've narrowed it down. We're only dropping one. One is still in the works. Um, so we are going to have another release at another date. But for right now, we are dropping Remain Untamed Nocturnal Mix on 6624. So yes. hit the pre save button. Everyone, go hit the pre save. So when it does drop, you guys will be the first ones to hear it. And let us know your thoughts. Uh, even though Mark is going to play the shit out of it in every ad that promotes <laughs> that until the day. So if you were to put all the ads in a certain order, you might be able to hear the song. But uh, please click that pre-save button and do us a favor. It helps us uh, with our numbers. Just to let other people know, hey, that our stuff's coming out and that more people are interested in helping us spread the word. And then, and then the next release should be probably the first week of what is that? Uh, July. You lie. You lie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you should be, we'll, we'll we'll get that nailed down, but I think it's going to be right around there. So okay. Yeah. So we're all looking forward to these songs being released to the public, but we got to wait our time and put in our little efforts and stuff like that. So. Making stuff work, yeah. making stuff happen. I love it. Yeah, there's all um, the, there's all the uh, the fun stuff you got to do, you know. So get the merch ready. And yeah, doing a whole lot of promotion for a whole lot of stuff coming out. It's it's exciting. Um, I know we got other tracks that we've been working on um, that we're messing around with for the next stuff coming out. So we're, we're yeah, there's already there's already a. I think there's already a handful of stuff. We haven't even dropped the album and we're already, we already got a handful of things we're working on for the next. So album next, you know, thing. <laughs> what do the you next... know about an album? <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, the next, uh, whatever it is, you know, those things. So what <laughs> the next, what, uh, well, maybe Danny spoiled something. What? That we're going to do an album, another album one day? Well, that's kind yeah. of the goal, I would hope, but that's okay. Oh, but, but that is some, someday that we're going to do the show. <laughs> we got other, we got other stuff. Like I've been hearing the, the beats that Josh has been putting down for some of the newer tracks. I'm, I'm more curious to hear where Mark is going to fit in with a lot of this new writing. I'm really curious, and I know we're going to push him to new limits, and, and you're going to hear different stuff this time, because you can hear the growth. That sounds disgusting. Um, but you can hear... <laughs> you can hear his... Um, he's he's that mighty that you can hear his growth. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, but you he's can like, hear... What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's growth. Uh, anyways, but you can hear how we've pushed Mark to different places with each song that we've released, and oh, and high stuff that's low, come here, out. there, right? Yeah. But I, I think we could push him even more. Well, uh, check I this think... out. Like for for but, me, like I, I look at doing a whole new kind of like say say we are jumping, and here's here's the uh, the mark in the sand, and here's another album, another project, you know. Uh, me like my whole approach on guitar is going to be way different and I'm my style is going to be a little different I'm going to push it in ways and and do do things that experiment with things that I uh I don't normally do you know like I was I was playing on some shit the other day and I was like you know this really sounds like some kind of Tom Morello type shit you know and I've never really never really done that with my guitar playing is said that name like oh that kind of sounds like you know so I'm just you know, I, I think that it's an opportunity to uh, to do something a little different. And then, yeah, of course, like push each other, you know, because it's that's where with really, different influences. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's where really cool shit comes from, you know? So, yeah. Definitely. As long as you're not doing exactly what your influences did, but, you know. No. <laughs> it, it, exactly, yeah. That's why I guess, for me, I enjoy the difference in this project versus my other project. Not saying that one is better than the other, but with my other band, because it's yeah, goth, yeah. black metal, we're kind of locked into we have a structure of the way the song is going to go. There's going to be this tempo no matter what. It's going to start at this speed. It may go faster. It may go a little slower. We don't really have breakdowns, but almost every song has some type of guitar solo. So it's kind of like every song has the same formula. Where with you guys, when I joined, we don't really have the same starting and ending point for every song. Some songs are heavy. Some songs, I don't want to say poppy, but for me, it's a softer pattern that I'm playing compared to my other band where I'm oh, running yeah. every goddamn fucking song. Like anything under one, 180 BPM is kind of a shock to me because yeah. we start off that fast. Where with us, like, okay, we're down to 100 BPM or Heathens really, really low 80s. Like it's a struggle for me to go from playing something that fast to that slow. Well, but I'm I'm more of like, if you could do it fast. Oh, yeah. Go fast. Yeah. I mean, because here's the thing: you're you're the energy you put forward. You're gonna feel that at a live show, and then if you're not even set to a click or a metronome or a sample, and you just yeah, let's go live. Fucking, you better have a click, or you're gonna fucking go faster, like ten, twenty BPMs faster than you normally would. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes you, get, sometimes you play shows, you get excited, and yeah, that's me. Yeah. I was the one who was yeah. always at least like eight to ten BPMs faster. So I, I have to play with a click just for my own comfort. Like I forced <laughs> myself to learn how to do that live because it was always a, no, you're going too fast. No, I'm not. No, I swear you're going too fast. Like, we even timed a set and we ended 40 seconds early. You're fucking speeding up. So now with me being on the click, it's like, nah, man, it's not me. You guys are falling behind. <laughs> now you guys suck. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah that, click, but, that click doesn't lie, you know? But that's why, I, for me, that's why I've always, like, with uh, previous projects, we're not dropping names, but in previous projects, uh the samples you you it's just a fucking metronome like keep your sample in and a timing so you can hear the time okay cool then you gotta stick with that and then you're kind of guided by that regardless if you play live or not like you have to stick to the time of that song because of hey josh so where, tell, where that tell, sample hits tell rob so, what, what tell rob what you have in your ears <laughs> No, not one damn sample at all. <laughs> all, <click. laughs> all I have is just straight click. And if anything, drum mix for myself because so many samples and then your guys' vocals, like I yeah. get lost. <laughs> no, I get, but you can hear it. You can still hear it or you can yeah. even feel, feel the other beats and samples that are going like, on. Uh, but I get, I get, oh, I forgot to turn on my do not disturb amateur hour over here sorry <laughs> you're all good you're good like for me uh -huh. my perfect mix is the way we set it up for my ears my mix is click <laughs> he dipped clicks uh a little bit of track barely any and then just if we have tracks i'll use the floor monitors just to hear that because you like your mix so damn loud that the house mix i can follow the back track with that so as long as I can hear the click in my ear, because I don't want it too loud, that I don't want to go like to that one guy, the sound of... It wasn't the sound of music, the sound of... The dude, the drummer who went deaf. Did you watch that Amazon movie? Oh, the sound of metal? Yeah, that thing. I don't want to land up like that guy, because that's my worst nightmare. Sound of music? I said, it's not sound of music, but it's sound of something. <laughs> sound of music. Not the Nazi uh, movie. Oh, all right. Um, No, I, I get you. For me, though... Uh, in ears, they when when we perform, especially when we did the shows, um, gone after three songs, you're just like, I can't hear shit out of here. I have to rely on the floor mix now at that point because I just need to hit certain points and certain songs. Cool, 
fuck, I can fuck off after that. I'll feel, I'll feel the stage. I'll feel the crowd. Not like that, but you know what, how they're going, <laughs> how they're, how they're reacting to the music. I'll, I'll feed off that and it gets heavier or slower or whatever it be. We feel it, you know? Plus, you don't have to worry about hitting a pitch too much or anything where I guess for Mark, he's got to worry about hitting a key. You've just got that raw pitch the whole time. Yeah, I just got to bring the energy, though. But that's that's the same as you, though, because yeah. if if you just went in and jazz hands all the whole fucking set, it'd be like, what the fuck is this? Like, I know you could play drums, but you're like, yeah, I'm feeling jazzy today. You know, <laughs> wire brushes and shit. Can you imagine <laughs> right in the middle of a tour just being like, hey, guys. Fucking feel a little jazzy. <laughs> jazzy. That would be my drum solo. Just bust out some jazz brushes and then do a little uh, five four time signature solo, and then all right, right back into the song. <laughs> <laughs> With the fanfare and everything, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I'll have my yeah, son me, write my jazz part. Me, I tend to, I tend to uh, pop them out and pop them in. You know, my in ears when when the show's going on because. There's some parts I really need to hear something, and some parts I'm just kind of like, all I need to do is hear the drums, and I'll be good, you know. So, and then and then I do I do need vocals because I get a lot of cues from um, where we're at in the song by the vocals. Mm -hmm. By like oh, yeah. sometimes it could just be how they're singing or the intensity or certain parts. Like at some point, I just I don't even even I don't even have to think about where we're at in the song because, yeah. So what? it's uh, you're, you don't? The, I go I go off I go off a lot of the vocal cues. Huh. Lucky. Yeah. So I just uh, I don't really I feel like I don't even have to pay attention while I'm playing. That's, uh, that's... I, I don't have that luxury. If I relied on vocal cues, <laughs> I think we'd be falling behind. <laughs> so I gotta make sure I'm on time. My only struggle for me is just making sure I get that control beginning with Rob's talking. Oh <laughs> yeah. No, no, I gotta hear it too. Like that's that's the one. Um, and then there's another one, Heathens. I think it's Heathens that I need yeah. for. Like, you I gotta got, hear you get you get cued by a click track, and it's uh, yeah. I it's, yeah, you gotta have that cue because if you miss that cue and you're just like everyone's looking at you and you're like, oh what? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> or uh. Hey, open up the hi hat. Yeah, that's another one. It, we can. <laughs> that was great, though. That was fun. It was just the way. What's he talking about? And then for me, because I'm uh, not necessarily oh. struggling, but because I'm wearing the mask too while I'm yeah. playing, I'm trying to figure uh, out what is, is he high. Dumb. Is he high fiving yeah. me? What's with the duck hand? Like, what is this <laughs> shit? Oh wait, we gotta no! start. Oh shit! <laughs> I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> We saved right. it. We it saved it. It's really hard when you're on in ears and there's something happening you want to communicate because you can't hear shit, you know, because you got basically earplugs in, and then you got shit going on in the earplugs, and then yeah, it's, fun. it's lots of fun. It makes it makes for a good adventure, you know. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the other side. <laughs> you know, <it's> kind of <laughs> yeah. Like, there is sometimes start. it feels it's... like that, right? But, you you yeah, like. But... But you don't want to end up being like what's her name, uh, the Fuji's girl. Oh boy! You don't want to be like her and start your song over and then start your song over. Just like, dude, at a certain point, move forward. Let's just keep going. Yep. <laughs> the gods don't want you to finish that song, and I've been there in those moments. Oh, technical uh, late in establishments where the power just goes out, and you're just like mid song. Really? Okay, do we start the song over or? Was it almost done? No, we just fuck. Or yeah. the cops show up. That's a fun one. Had that happen? Yeah, what I think. Did, it, hey, it, what? I think that's like the first your first step to being in a band is you got to play a show where the cops show up. Do you guys remember the first show you played where the cops showed up? I remember I, the first and the last. First and last. I'm, I'm gonna say Go they were all, all my first shows were like backyard parties. So I'm gonna say cops showed up to every single one of them. We had it shut down by sheriffs because somebody got stabbed at our party across the street and almost died. And like three, yeah, three dudes jumped somebody. Like it was, it was a long night. Um, some guy made a pass at somebody else's wife. 
and naturally the husband got pissed, punched the guy in the face. Uh, we escorted him out, and as he was going out, he decided drunk he was going to punch somebody's motorhome who we knew. So because he did that, like four dudes out of nowhere just bum-rushed him, beat the shit out of him. He got stabbed with a broken weed pipe. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, sheriffs got called. We had the ghetto helicopter flying over the house. We all got questioned, got put out on the street, took our names. And because nobody would take the blame for anything, we had to wait till everybody gave the information. Uh, two people ended up getting arrested later on. Uh, the guy did survive, but had to have surgery and everything, and the cops were putting it like, yeah, if he dies, this is attempted manslaughter, and it's on you guys. And Yeah, that was my two first times. party. Last party <laughs> that wasn't was... That was last. Okay, I no, like that. The last one uh, went above even more. Uh, my wife almost got tasered by a L.A. County sheriff. We were playing in Long Beach at uh, one of their festivals at the pier. It was okay. that, where they have the upstairs and downstairs shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, my metal band, it happened to be my last show with them because we were playing in Compton and areas like that, and I wasn't feeling the crowds. But that's where they wanted to be. The name of the band was Blood for Our Brothers. So it was kind of like, what do you expect? Uh, I made the choice to quit the band. It was my last show with them, and we were two songs in. Our crowd got a little rowdy. Security decided they were going to stop the show, and that didn't work. Our crowd got into the fight with security. Because of that, Long Beach PD and sheriffs came in, shut down the show, started fighting with the sheriffs. I had to pull my wife on stage because people started getting tased. And luckily, she didn't get tased, but my wife's only like four foot eleven. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting show. Like we played two songs, they shut down the rest of the night, and it wasn't even like nine o'clock at night, and it was supposed to be an all night festival. Uh, they watched us load our gear out. So yeah, were you headlining? No, we were like the fourth band that started. We didn't even get halfway through the night. Who who is headlining this? Because they if if they got to be pissed that the whole night got shut down for them. Huh? Uh, it was one of those. Uh, I think it was for Bamboozle, if you remember that shit, Bamboozle Fest or whatever. This was like okay. a battle for that, and these were all the bands that won. Okay. So it was like a two. Wait, you shut down a battle of the bands? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Of a battle with the cops. Yeah, pretty much. That's the way it went. Yeah. Who won? Cops. No, 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 no. Festival. Who won the festival? I don't think there was a... I don't know who actually was the determining winner because not everybody got to play. It should have been you guys then, right? Default. Uh, that would have been nice. But yeah, no. We, we got two songs in and then that was it. Uh, and then pretty much that just guaranteed my last show. Like, I, I got paid 60 bucks for doing that show. But it was like, yeah, I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> that was my decision. So fuck that. I learned my lesson then. I feel that. I feel that. So yeah, I'm Holy all for the hardcore shows, but I, I I watch my limits. What about you, Danny? Can you top that? Um, no, not really. Um, <laughs> I've had some, I've had some interesting, interesting things happen. You know, uh, you know, with shows and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, um. Not, not like, not like that at a show I was playing where there was like stabbings. Not that I'm aware of. So, I think I'm, I think I'm all good there. It was the same band you, for both shows. Was it? Same Man, band for both shows. Wow. Yeah. How about uh, Rob? How about you? You, you were playing a ton of shows. Um, uh, well, I, I mean, early days, yeah, because nobody yeah. liked live music where we grew up. Yeah. Um, but I would say later. Uh, I, I remember doing a photo shoot with a band and we were on an overpass of, yeah. uh, just a street. It was just a street overpass, but it wasn't like, uh, but it went over the freeway. And so we were taking shots on there and these cops show up and they're like, what's going on? And we're just like, Hey, we're just, we're just doing a photo shoot, this and that. Oh, you guys aren't jumping. No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Not YouTube videos or anything like that. We're just taking band photos. All right. All right, just be safe, guys. Real quick, uh, would you guys <laughs> mind parking your cars like this so we could take a BAM photo <laughs> in front of the cop cars? And 
<laughs> we did the, like the lineup on the curb. We did we did a whole bunch of shots with these cops, and they're like, "Do you want us guns drawn?" I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, just... yeah, that would have been badass." <laughs> but, but like, I we know, did a I... shot with like these cop cars behind us with the lights on, and and yeah, we did we did some shit, and then we took a picture with the cops, and it was, it was weird, but uh, yeah. Those run-ins are, you know, you don't want those. I mean, that's that's the best outcome. It's like, hey, come on in, have fun. Yeah, we're having fun. Leave us alone. Like, that's that's essentially what you're hoping for. Like, don't go searching the truck. Hey, who said that? Like, <laughs> you you don't want those, but uh, but you don't want any cop showing up to a gig. Like, I've played a gig in. Uh, Huntington Beach, and they're like, yeah, we're going to have live bands. We booked the show, and we're on Main Street in Huntington Beach. And... Power gone, right? And just, nope. You ain't you ain't finishing this one. Damn. <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, okay, so what kind of music do you play? And you're like, oh, it's, it's a club. Why, why do we even get booked at a club? You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking 2000s were weird <laughs> it's weird now when has it not been weird that's very true like it doesn't matter what show you play there's always the one band that it's what's going on here it's it's not often that all bands gel together uh. or you you land up with the oh we just needed a last minute band that just hopped on real quick and you can't knock them because i mean a show's a show you rather play than not play, but at the same time, it almost nowadays turns into is bad exposure going to like linger forever because of that one fucking show? I don't know. Ask Vince Neil. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, but that one show where you should have just said, "No, nah, we're not playing." But but here's the thing: like you're gonna have bad shows. You can't like. If Dave Grohl gave up for every stage he fell off of, like <laughs> we wouldn't have Foo Fighters, we wouldn't even have Nirvana. Like he would have gave up and just stayed doing what he was doing. But you got to get back up. You got to get on that horse. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have bad shows. You're gonna have bad nights where you shouldn't be doing the show. But hey, contract's a contract. You still got to fucking do it, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's a give and take of well you got to put so much of yourself into what you do. Like, like I was just saying about how much energy you're putting forward into the drums. You've got to have that at each show. You got to bring that. And if you can't bring it, some nights we just have to sweep it under the rug with everyone else's playing or whatever, you know, you, you're going to have bad nights, but just don't let that get you down. Keep getting back up on that fucking horse and rock it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that, that's yeah. very true. I've had some very bad shows before. I've had a show where we started the wrong song because <laughs> they changed the set list on me and I had no idea. And it was like, okay, well, let's play that song again. So I know exactly what you're talking about. The main thing is, do you continue going or do you let that be your reason to not play anymore so uh i mean you i've had bad shows where we didn't even have the um uh, sound card that had the sample tracks like dude we can't even play if we don't have that so what do we do well let's 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 wait till the last possible minute if we they don't show up then fuck it we're out of the gig sorry our condolences to all of our people that came out but but luckily, the dude ends up showing up, like, right before, okay, let's make it happen, bam, you can go on with the show. Or, you know, hey, I can't hear my in-ears, like, let's get that situated real fucking quick so we can have a good show, you know? Man, I've, I, done, I've done shows with, with back pain that I shouldn't have been upright, you know what I'm saying? I've done, I've done shows puking in a trash can, you know, because <laughs> you're sick. And it, it, you I know. got that beat. I got that beat. <laughs> uh, uh, same band uh okay uh threw up <laughs> in my mouth while playing and swallowed it back down and my wife and her friend watched me do it and i guess her friend looked at my wife and was like is he okay and i looked right at her no, no. <laughs> not 
But yeah, I've been sick while playing. Uh, I've literally walked off the stage as soon as we finished. People Wait have come up to us. Good show, and Wait. I've barfed. So, yeah, I've played with a kidney stone before. Oh. Did you say your band barfed in your mouth? No, I barfed. <laughs> no. Oh. No, oh. no, 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 okay. no. No. I was in a band, and they barfed in my mouth, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, that was what my reason we, for quitting the band. We gotta do a better background hey, uh, check on our place. Hey guys, hey, I quit. <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody's throwing up in my mouth, no. Uh, uh, no. Okay, but you threw up in your mouth. Yes, mid-song, okay. and had nowhere to throw, like, spit it out, so I swallowed it back down, but it was because two of us in the band got sick the same day. So it was one of those, we ate something, we got food poisoning from the same shit, Ooh, that it was, that yeah, it, it, it was just bad timing. Like, I felt fine until literally five minutes before we had to play. He landed up throwing up after we finished playing. Oh, but it <sighs> hit you mid-show. Yeah, mid-show because of all that running and mid-playing and like it came up and had nowhere to go. So it had to go back down and yeah, and then teary-eyed and. Are you okay? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, man. Uh. We're gonna. We're not doing no encore. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. Fuck out. We done. Speaking have of that, you, no. have you, have either oh. of you ever uh, found your limit of like drunkenness you could be and and perform on stage? Have you ever found that limit and went, uh oh? <laughs> not on stage. No, not on stage. At practice, yes, but no, not on stage because I'm so nervous that yeah. I sweat. My metabolism goes through me that, no, I've never been that drunk on stage. But practice, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Back in the day, yeah. Okay. Oh, How definitely. about you, Rob? Uh, well, if there's been a couple of shows where I've ended up without my shirt on. So it's like, we're done. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. Nobody wants to see that. So it's I tried... I tried to put a guitar through a wall one time during a show. That was fun. I was there for that one. But you were, huh? Yeah, I still <laughs> have a wall. guitar. By the way. Still, yeah, yeah. It didn't. It didn't happen. But I tried. I tried. The hell of a party. He's so, still trying and, to do it. Still trying so, to do it. So, so Rob, you were there, so you know why I got that drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad news that night. Bad, horrible. Please, and that's it another. Was, uh, that'll be another episode. We'll say, yeah, that should one, we yeah. save that for another day? Oh yeah, I think we, so. We just go into dirt, just talk about the fucking house parties that we used to do and all oh, that. Oh man, oh yeah. We used well, to, I got, a, we used to I got go. a couple more stories we could throw next time. You haven't gotten all of them from me yet. <laughs> so let's see if we get the the house party dirt stories. We'll save that for oh. next week. <laughs> uh what about uh what about the 30 pack and a half story or the tw it was the 20 pack and a half story right no it was 30 pack and a half was that what it was yeah it was like oh, isn't that a 45 pack <laughs> yeah <laughs> 30 pack and a half oh he bought a 15 pack <laughs> where the fuck is this guy getting beers from yeah, where do you get 15 beers from well it was like a 30 pack what? Who makes a 30 pack? Let alone a, it was like the math was not math in that day. Yeah. Bro. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Don't don't even think about it. Like this is me being what 17 years old with a fucking tape recorder at a house party that Danny's throwing for his buddy at his house. I remember Damn. that. You, yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you have that conversation on tape somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere you gotta I got find that, that because we should oh. play that on here because that shit was hilarious. Oh God, just you go. I gotta go back through some of the tapes I have. Just tapes. I don't even know if I have anything to play them on. I anymore. was gonna say, do you have a fucking cassette player at least? <laughs> I mean, I got the recorder still that you could play it back on the recorder, but I, I don't know. I don't know, man. That'd be a fun. I, that'll be a fun journey down memory lane, huh? Never know what you find. Yeah, I, uh, I I think I recall some of what took place after all of that that night. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Oh, the guy, yeah, locking himself yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah, we won't go in there. Yeah. Um, 
You guys have anything <laughs> else? Holy shit. We did a whole half hour. Um, that, was, yeah. that was a half hour? Worst gig? You guys wanted to talk about your worst gig that you've played real quick? Worst gig. Okay, BB uh, Kings. Uh, well, yeah, and... you don't, well, I mean, you could drop that location because they're closed, right? Yeah. Uh, City Walk, right? That was... We did a Battle of the Bands there for something <laughs> one time, and it was... Uh, sound guys up on like the second level up there like the third it's, it was insane and so you have no way to communicate with them and like my guitar was just blasting in my face and it was i couldn't hear anything and it was just horrible and i think we got shit stolen from us and it was just bad day yeah well, well, but nobody you... got stabbed and police didn't show up so that's okay, good there you go yeah. <laughs> okay um I can't say the name because it's no longer called the Key Club, right? No. No, something else. What? Oh, okay. One yeah. It, it would have to be the Key Club in early 2000s. And the hilarious yeah. part was I was a guest drummer for a hip hop artist. And a buddy of mine, Manny, was playing guitar. And the way we got thrown into this was uh, we. You, you kind man. of know the story? So yes, the same no, Manny. No, no, I don't know. I don't know the story, but go on. But yes, I want to hear this. It's the same Manny. Um, okay. We had a studio in Covina that we were renting out with this guy who happens to be the hip-hop artist. His name okay. was, I believe, Destry or something. Okay. And he had the idea of, hey, I want you guys to perform with my band. I want you to add some live drums and Manny add a guitar solo, and I'm going to scratch behind it and we're going to have some rapping we practiced it for a couple weeks because we had the same studio we had an idea i had no clue that the entire time this dude was going to have a backtrack playing as well as us playing live on the stage and it was at the key club and he was opening up for corrupt at the time so we had dudes from the dog pound and everybody there and whole crew and everything we have to come in through the back entrance little tiny manny and i are the only white fucking people there <laughs> and they're uh -huh. all looking at us like what is this shit we get up on stage get everything set up they have me in the left corner djs to the side of me i had no idea that homeboy was just gonna literally play the whole track and i was supposed to drum along to it we never synced up the track to my drums, so I was off time the whole entire time. Manny's guitar, he had issues with that it cut in and out that, like, people either thought it was great and was hilarious, like, oh, my God, look at the little tiny boy playing guitar. Or we just got, like, laughed at hysterically that it was like, what the fuck am I even doing here? Like, why am I even playing drums for this shit when there's, uh, actual song behind me like we look like a live embarrassing karaoke band in front of all these supposed big hip-hop stars in the middle of fucking hollywood <laughs> like i could not wait to get the fuck out of there it was embarrassing as hell <laughs> that's rough yeah what about you rub but nothing like that shit um i don't know i feel like the battle of the bands ones are always the worst because it's it's always apples and oranges and and then it breaks down to not even if the band's that good, but how many tickets did they sell? And well, how many yep. tickets were they given? And, and then you start breaking it down and you're just like, dude, no. Like, it's like, who's a better band? Is it Metallica or is it Papa Roach? And you're just like, well, how many tickets did they sell? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but that, that'd be a different scenario. But doing it <laughs> at a local level, you, you would just have to go based off of, Hey, what is everyone feeling? How's the crowd reacting? Like, how did you book the show? Did you put Slipknot first and then close with Disturb? Like, wh how did you book your show? Ultimately, Correct. I think Battle of the Bands are the worst thing because they they pit music, which just is expression of emotion through energy. You know what I'm saying? And they're pitting Turning, it against just each taking other. Sales. Like, it's not a fucking sport. You can't make music a sport. Because if you do that, you ruin the whole fucking... You ruin the whole thing of it. 
like, oh no, we we put these musicians together and oh, get the fuck out of here. Like you feel it. It's an energy that you put together, you put forward and it's just, that's how it should come off. And if you make it something other than about the music, then fucking call it that. Battle of the ticket sales. Like, yeah, all right. Much. Right. Who wants to join this one? Like, Go have at that fucking show, but I'd rather be in like, hey, let's. Who can create and inspire more people? That that's what a battle of the band should be. It's like, do you feel what they're performing? Do you do you take in their uh, the artistic uh, value that they're putting forth for it? You know what I'm saying? Like, or are they just going out there AI generating everything, calling it? Oh, there you go. Thanks. Yeah. Like, would I want to watch your band again, basically? That part. Like, do you have the human emotion, and are you that putting right that there. forward? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, this has been Last Day Forecast. Uh, check us out on all the socials. Like, follow, share. Um, you know, share it with your friends and family. And uh, you guys got anything else to add? Stay spicy. <laughs> <laughs>